Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tara Sonnenschein, Executive Vice President here at the United States Institute of Peace, and it is with enormous pleasure that we welcome President Karzai, Secretary Clinton, uh, for a discussion to be moderated by our own Ambassador Bill Taylor. In addition to this room, we have a full room down the hall in the Academy, and we have a global audience watching live online. We hope we'll be able to take some questions following this event, this discussion, and now I'm happy to turn the podium over to Ambassador Richard Solomon, President of USIP. Good afternoon and many thanks for uh, joining us this afternoon. Madam Secretary, thanks for coming to our humble abode here. We are uh, so jammed in here, I think we need some bigger space and I think <laughs> some of you know we're working on that. And uh, President Karzai, again, we're, we're honored to have you join us here at the Institute of Peace. Uh, there are other folks who I want to mention as being with us today. Our board chairman, Robin West, and other board members, uh, Judy Van Rest and uh, uh, Nancy Zirkin are here. Uh, Ambassador Dick Holbrook and Ambassador Carl Eikenberry, we're very pleased that they're able to join us today. As well, Senator uh, John Warner, a good friend and supporter of the Institute, uh, Congresswoman Jane Harmon, and uh, accompanying uh, President Karzai, we have Ambassador Jawad and uh, members of his, of his cabinet. And as uh, Tara mentioned, uh, down the hall we have other folks. Uh, we have established a professional training academy in conflict management and uh, peace building skills. Uh, these, this facility is down the hall and uh, under training right now are some folks uh, working with the Defense Department who will be going to Afghanistan to try to help strengthen the defense and interior ministries as they bring stability uh, to that country. <coughs> Let me just say briefly that uh, the Institute of Peace has, wor has been working uh, on the ground in Afghanistan since 2002. Uh, we currently have an office in Kabul full-time uh, working on a range of issues to desi designed to build civilian capacity, governance, and to promote uh, reconciliation with uh, programs focused on uh, promotion of the rule of law, training conflict uh, mediators, uh, training women in conflict management skills, and uh, trying to work and establish that uh, very complex relationship between Afghanistan's traditional justice system and uh, a rule of law uh, set of processes. So we're, we're deeply committed to supporting our government and that of President Karzai as they try to bring uh, reconciliation, uh, sta stabilization and development uh, to their country. So uh, with that, let me just say that the Institute here is fortunate to have uh, some real talent uh, supporting our efforts in Kabul, Alex Thier, uh, and above all, Ambassador Bill Taylor who will now be be leading the uh, discussion. So Bill, the podium is yours, and thanks again for coming. Dick, thank, thank you very much, Dick. Mr. President, Madam Secretary, thank you very much for being here. Um, it's clear that uh, it's been a very successful visit. Congratulations uh, for this. The, the message of an enduring partnership has been throughout the discussion at the State Department two days ago, at the White House uh, yesterday. The Vice President, you've met many of the press many times. Uh, we hope here at the Institute of Peace this afternoon to have a more relaxed discussion um, over tea in our, in our uh, living room here. Um, it's, uh, it's an informal opportunity to discuss serious issues. And so this is, uh, this is our opportunity to have a, a conversation. Mr. President, tomorrow you will head for the 101st Airborne and then you will head home. And and the focus will shift uh, from the headlines of the day to implementation. You and President Obama, our governments uh, have made commitments and have made uh, specific timelines. Uh, there will be a, a policy review uh, in December. So there are many things to be done in a short period of time. What are your priorities? What specific steps will you take when you go back to Kabul? indeed was uh, frantic, rather uh, from uh, 
uh, my perspective from that of my delegation to Moscow in uh, Christian hospitality, not at one, the success of the second point, uh, the output of the two. Oh, yes. Is the speaker okay? I thought I was loud enough. Uh, no need for repetition, I hope, or to polish spoke, okay. Uh, so um, uh, it worked very, very good. I had the pleasure of uh, an informal dinner with uh, Secretary Clinton and Secretary Gates, followed up the next morning uh, by a, an extensive meeting uh, between the Afghan government and the US government, the counterparts uh, with one another. We came in uh, groups of five clusters of Afghan ministries from security to economics to human resources to agriculture to army and uh, to uh, reconciliation and, and, and governance. Um, then uh, followed up with uh, a visit, a very important one, to um, the water reeds where I had the honor of uh, visiting um, uh, some of your soldiers who had returned uh, from Afghanistan with serious uh, wounds. Some had lost limbs, just like I had seen some of our soldiers lost limbs. This was a very touching uh, part of the trip, one that reminds us once again that uh, we need to do a lot more to have these uh, sons and daughters of yours come back home um, uh, without injuries and, and, uh, and happier. Uh, we had also uh, an extensive talk yesterday with uh, the president and, and uh, uh, his team. Uh, and today was busy with the Congress. Yesterday was busy with the Congress to event today. I visited the Arlington Cemetery this morning uh, to pay respect to the dead ones um, uh, buried there. Uh, in short, the trip was meaningful, substantive, and had all the right um, tones and, and um, uh, objectives. Uh, going back home with this in background, uh, uh, the conclusion of the trip would bring me to uh, the implementation of all that we discussed um, uh, during our trip. That means uh, following up on my um, uh, speech uh, during my inauguration address, uh, the London conference, the pledges that we have made to the Afghan people, the uh, commitments that we have uh, with our international partners, and to follow up and implement all that we have um, uh, in mind and promised, meaning uh, the peace process, uh, on which we'll be convening a um, uh, consultative uh, jirga um, around the 29th of May, uh, which will have um, at least 1,500 Afghans from all over the country, from all the people, from all the provinces, including, I hope, uh, at least 20% uh, women, at least 20% women, who would advise us on how to move forward with the peace process and uh, what pace should it have, uh, how to time it, and uh, uh, how to model it um, as we move forward. Uh, with one uh, um, thing taken for granted, that is that uh, the peace process will be with those uh, of the Taliban or other uh, militant groups who are not part of Al-Qaeda or other terrorist networks or ideologically against us. When I say us, I mean the allies and all of us um, uh, in any way that uh, would endanger our constitution, uh, the freedoms, the democracy, and the progress that we have achieved. Uh, beyond that, we have um, uh, the Kabul conference, uh, which will be Afghanistan's plan for the future and uh, end programs uh, uh, for which preparation is going on. Um, uh, from our side, Dr. Ashraf Ghani is in charge of uh, preparing for the conference. Um, uh, we'll be uh, giving the world our outlook to the future and asking for support for that. Uh, and then we'll have the parliamentary elections for which we have made the preparations with the backing of our international partners. Uh, Around these three main uh, agendas and in continuity to the future, there is, of course, the issue of governance in Afghanistan, handling corruption in Afghanistan, and making sure that, that we complete our success um, uh, in all aspects as soon as possible. So Afghanistan is a prosperous, good, peaceful country. 
so you are much more secure here in, 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 in the United States and the rest of the world. And the question of strategic partnership with America, uh, we'll keep for a moment later. Madam Secretary, we made commitments, the United States made commitments as well. Um, are there specific steps that we have in mind taking between now and, and December when the policy review? Well, first, um, let me echo what uh, President Karzai said. Uh, from our side, this was a highly successful uh, visit. And the substantive discussions that we had, uh, I think, took our relationship to an even higher level, which will serve as a very good uh, starting point for the uh, efforts to rewrite and uh, re uh, uh, furbish the uh, strategic partnership declaration uh, that we hope to complete by the end of this year. And that will be uh, a statement of our commitment, uh, our commitment between our two countries, uh, not just our governments, but our people. And it will uh, specifically set forth uh, the areas of cooperation and uh, focus. Uh, we had a, a great uh, visit in large part because we had uh, excellent cooperation and coordination in preparation for the visit. I want to compliment uh, President Karzai and his team, some of whom are sitting here in the audience, uh, who have done an excellent job. Um, those who have met uh, any of the ministers and representatives of the government uh, have uniformly come away impressed. Um, I don't want to... Uh, embarrass them, but I've heard from many of my colleagues in uh, government and my former colleagues uh, from the Congress. And uh, there is a, a, a real sense of the uh, commitment and the uh, professionalism of uh, the ministers who accompanied President Karzai. On our side, we had a, a, a great effort uh, quarterbacked by Ambassador Holbrook in the State Department here in Washington and his team, which is a, a very broad and deep uh, cross-section of experts, and Ambassador Eikenberry and his team uh, in Kabul. Um, I think that is the beginning of the answer to your question, Bill. Um, we have put together on both sides a whole-of-government response. This is no longer president to president, as important as that is, or the occasional meeting between uh, the uh, you know, Secretary of Defense and the Minister of Defense, or the Secretary of State and the the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. We are building a very strong partnership that links together all levels of our government to work on these uh, challenges that we are facing together. Uh, certainly the headlines are about our, our military and our uh, defense uh, law enforcement challenges. But we are working very closely with the Minister of Finance, um, and there's been great improvements in the economy, the Minister of Agriculture, the Minister of Health and Education, I could go on and on. So the implementation has already started, because following the opening meeting that we had in the State Department on Tuesday morning, uh, groups broke off and went into great depth about uh, the specifics uh, as to what would be the follow through. And as President Karzai said, we have some milestones along the way. There's going to be uh, an enormous amount of effort put in by the government of Afghanistan with our support in preparation for the Kabul conference. Uh, we, we heard uh, a description at lunch with the president uh, yesterday by Dr. Ghani about how we're going to be teeing up a lot of decisions. And you know, it's going to be the Afghan government that does it, but we are going to be in support of that and that there then will be an implementation schedule following uh, the Kabul conference. The parliamentary elections uh, will be very important in September. And uh, I met with the women ministers who are, are here just a little while ago, and, and uh, there's a, a great number of uh, you know, women uh, who are putting themselves forward as candidates. The story about what's happening below the surface doesn't get told often enough. And uh, the ministers and the president and we on our side are determined to do so. And also, it is critical that we go into this with our eyes open. Uh, even though we have extremely professional counterparts uh, that we are working with on both sides, um, there are very serious problems and challenges. And that's why, as President Karzai said, 
the first step in his process of moving towards some uh, uh, peace effort will be this peace jirga on May 28th, uh, 29th, uh, which will bring people from across the country for a consultation. The United States supports this. The United States supports uh, the efforts that uh, the President uh, and his uh, his leadership and the people of Afghanistan are pursuing. So it is a multi-pronged effort. Uh, this is not just a meeting that uh, produced a lot of good feeling. This is unfortunately for those of us who are uh, required to respond, a meeting that uh, has uh, produced a lot of work uh, that we are going to be uh, following up on uh, day by day and aiming toward the Kabul conference for our first progress report. Madam Secretary, um, there has been a lot of discussion of the date of July 2011 and a lot of discussion over the past week of this enduring partnership between the United States and Afghanistan. Is there a tension between those two concepts? Uh, that is, the, a, a date by which time some troops may begin to come down, uh, be, be removed, um, and yet enduring partnership that, uh, that we've committed to, that strategic partnership. Um, um, this is the discussion, so uh, either of your impressions on how this fits. Well, I'll start from our side. Please. And I think the President um, said it very well in the press conference uh, yesterday. Uh, we are aiming toward uh, July 2011 um, to begin the process of transitioning security in some parts of the country uh, to Afghan security forces. <coughs> it is a conditions-based decision. Um, we are impressed by the uh, increasing capacity of the uh, Afghan security forces and both uh, Minister Wardak, uh, who is the defense minister, and uh, Minister Atmar, the interior minister, on both the military and the police side uh, reported the progress but also you know, talked about the challenges. So we see the July 2011 date as another date to uh, aim for and uh, we believe that it can be the beginning of the security transition. The enduring partnership will last long beyond any security transition, any uh, withdrawal of combat forces uh, over time. Uh, we are committed to a strategic partnership uh, with Afghanistan. Uh, we believe strongly that uh, the Afghan people's love of freedom, uh, their <coughs> Uh, absolute commitment to their sovereignty, uh, their belief in their own potential, uh, makes them a very good long-term partner. And we intend to uh, work uh, with um, our partners in Afghanistan. And as President Obama said, after he's no longer president, after President Karzai is no longer president, uh, we're going to have this commitment between our governments and our, our peoples. And the final thing I would say, Bill, is you know, this is not an unusual model. I mean, we have relationships with countries all over the world where in previous times there might have been uh, reason for American uh, military forces to be stationed there. Um, and uh, in some cases they still are, from you know, Korea to uh, Europe. Uh, and I, I, I want people to remember our history. Uh, we've had long-term enduring relationships long after the guns were put down. And what we are doing together is trying to create the conditions, thanks to the great leadership of General McChrystal and his people on the ground, uh, to help the Afghan people regain uh, security uh, over their own territory. But we're not going anywhere. We're going to be there working with them, supporting uh, their efforts uh, far into the future. <coughs> uh, on this question, um, uh, Secretary Clinton really answered for both of us. I'll be adding um, uh, a little um, uh, on the um, uh, July um, uh, 2011 uh, pullout uh, of positive troops uh, question. Uh, we are planning in Afghanistan to prepare ourselves um, uh, in the form of the army and the police and other uh, institutions of the Afghan state uh, to be able to provide uh, for the security of the Afghan people in parts of the country where we can right now um, in the next um, uh, two to three years. And to expand that, extend that, 
uh, to the entire country uh, by uh, 2014, by the time uh, my term in office uh, is completed, for which I'm in a hurry. <coughs> Um, so um, uh, we are preparing ourselves for um, a takeover uh, of security so we are no longer a burden on the United States and our other allies, um, uh, neither militarily nor uh, economically. Afghanistan has um, the potential, the resources, the manpower, the location, the geography and the uh, position as a hub of um, uh, Central and, and, and Southwest Asia to do that. On the question of um, uh, enduring partnership, or as we refer to it as the strategic partnership, um, uh, Secretary Clinton put it very, very correctly within the right <coughs> context of that relationship. It is going to be beyond um, uh, the uh, uh, military uh, activity right now in our campaign against terrorism and into uh, the future long after we have retired and um, uh, perhaps um, into um, our uh, grandsons and great-grandsons and, and, and great-granddaughters' uh, <laughs> generations <laughs> as well. So uh, and this is something that Afghan people have been seeking for a long, long time. Uh, the substance of, uh, uh, rather, the most important substance of our conversations the past few days has been this subject, and it's a subject that I uh, um, can gladly take back to the Afghan people, uh, of course. This partnership between Afghanistan and the United States uh, is for the good of the region, mm. uh, for the stability of the region, and will provide the much needed confidence and peace in the region that uh, we are now seeking, but not yet uh, having. Thank you, Mr. President. Madam <laughs> Secretary, um, you both know that there are skeptics in both the United States and in Afghanistan, and they can be forgiven for asking well, we've been at this for over eight years. Um, and they're asking you, I'm sure, um, about, about what's new. Um, why do we think this is going to be different? The skeptics in Afghanistan, Mr. President, are worried that the American troops will be pulled out too early. And the skeptics in the United States, uh, <laughs> Madam Secretary, are worried that they've been there too, too long. Um, how do you address the skeptics? In Afghanistan, uh, the skeptics are not so much on uh, uh, the need for a strong relationship with America. They are the other way around. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they are the other way around. They want a stronger, more formidable relationship with America for the sake of Afghanistan and also for the sake of the region and for the sake of the U.S. interest uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and the completion of the struggle that we have. Uh, the July 20 uh, date uh, does not uh, pose a problem to us because we know that the United States will not abandon the cause unless we have succeeded fully. Uh, what we are seeking is beyond that and what uh, the Chef Priest so rightly uh, described today is the assurance that we have. Well, Bill, in, a, in addition to that very fundamental point, um, you know, skepticism is part of the American character. I mean, it, it just it goes with the territory. And it, it is important because hard questions need to be asked all the time. And that's exactly what President Obama did when he came into office. He, um, uh, he was confronted very early in his uh, term with a requests that had been uh, held over from the prior administration for additional troops. Uh, he agreed with that request, but he ordered a thorough uh, review of our policy. And it was extraordinarily in-depth. Uh, I've lost track of all the meetings uh, that uh, we had uh, both with the national security team and uh, in addition with the president. And at the end of that review, the president uh, reached a conclusion that I think should be respected by Americans because it was not a foreordained conclusion. It was not something that uh, he had to do. He did it after very careful examination of the facts, uh, of what was at stake for the United States, and of the importance uh, going forward of our commitment to Afghanistan. <coughs> and I, I understand why there are people who are skeptical, because as I say, that kind of uh, goes with the territory. 
but this is uh, a commitment that we believe very strongly is in America's interests. Uh, we want to see Afghanistan succeed. We want to see uh, the people of Afghanistan uh, have a future of peace and prosperity and progress after so many years of suffering. But we are in Afghanistan because it's in America's interests. And these interests converge. And that is really what uh, this meeting this week has been about, demonstrating clearly and unequivocally the convergence of our two respective nations' interests. Uh, and we are well aware of how hard the task is ahead. Uh, we are well aware that we face a determined, ruthless, uh, common enemy. Uh, we are well aware that Afghanistan lives in a, a dangerous and difficult neighborhood. Uh, I don't think there's any issue or any question that any skeptic could raise that we have not thought about and carefully uh, worked our way through. Um, and so we're very committed, and as the President said, we're very confident of the success uh, of this uh, going forward. Mr. President, how, how comfortable are you um, with the plans um, of your forces and the coalition forces uh, for the spring and summer in Kandahar? Um, <coughs> it has, uh, uh, since the past week, uh, adopted the right approach. Uh, when I say it, I mean the Afghan and the international forces. We are talking of a process there. Uh, and the process means um, uh, bringing uh, conditions uh, to Kandahar and the region around where there is better governance, uh, better resources, uh, more active, vigorous, uh, vibrant intelligence activity. And, uh, and then if and when and where needed uh, an operation uh, militarily in consultation with the community and backed by the community. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the approach that we have adopted and this approach will definitely uh, succeed. Uh, when I return, I'll be revisiting um, Kandahar. I'll be once again engaging with the community and the um, my, um, uh, leaders there um, uh, of all kinds and, and, and colors to uh, re-engage them on the question and have their advice and move along with them towards stabilization. Uh, that area does not have front lines. Mm -hmm. It's um, terrorist mm -hmm. activity. It's uh, assassinations. It's um, uh, uh, more psychological than, than, than physical uh, presence uh, of, of the terrorists and the Taliban. And we need to have the appropriate tools in the form I described to go ahead and win. If I could add to what uh, President Karzai very rightly described uh, as the approach that is being taken by the um, Afghan and international forces uh, concerning Kandahar, I think it's important for people to realize that, uh, uh, number one, this is not Marja. It's a different uh, campaign. Uh, Marja was uh, much more dominated by the Taliban. It became a real stronghold for them. Uh, Kandahar is a large, bustling city uh, that has an enormous amount of economic activity. Uh, people are getting on with their lives. Uh, but there are, as the President said, uh, pockets of Taliban uh, insurgents uh, who are engaging in a variety of uh, violent acts, including assassinating the deputy mayor just a few weeks ago. So as General McChrystal has explained to uh, the President and the National Security Team, uh, this is going to be uh, an action that uh, is going to use different tools um, uh, because the goal is to root out from what is a very um, active and uh, uh, ongoing uh, urban area those who intimidate. Now, they do not pose a threat to Kandahar. Uh, they are not going to take over Kandahar, but their presence is, has a chilling effect. Yes. Uh, it, it keeps you know, people inside. It keeps you know, girls from going to school. It, it keeps people from feeling comfortable going into uh, public uh, places or 
going out to work with the farmers, as, as uh, we've heard. So this is a different kind of campaign. It is not a huge, massive assault. Um, it is a much more targeted uh, effect or effort to try to you know, weed out uh, the Taliban. And we have no doubt they're dug in. We have no doubt that they have support there. Uh, but as the President said, the, you know, the combination of the military and intelligence uh, assets of both Afghanistan and the international forces, the President's own uh, personal involvement in going to Kandahar, meeting with leaders, uh, because in any counterinsurgency, uh, the goal is to, you know, win uh, the confidence of the people so that they will become your allies and will not be intimidated into giving safe haven to the Taliban. In fact, you know, we'll pick up uh, uh, the, the phone or, you know, walk outside and tell somebody that uh, there's some suspicious activity going on. So, so that is the goal, and I think it's being extremely uh, well planned, and uh, uh, obviously we all hope for an early uh, success. Mr. President, in that same line, you are a war president. You are the commander in chief. And as the secretary just mentioned, there are Taliban who are killing your officials uh, in, in, in cities uh, uh, in Afghanistan. In the Afghan culture, um, how does this notion of being commander in chief, a war president, fit? Is this, uh, uh, how does this fit into the Afghan culture? Well, this, this, this fits all right. Um, <laughs> the Afghans are um, uh, not unknown to uh, a situation <laughs> like that. Uh, uh, so uh, it is understood and uh, comprehensible. With one difference in my mind, uh, that we um, are speaking from a higher moral ground. that I am the president of the country uh, in a time where there is uh, terrorism, uh, suicide bombers, um, IEDs, uh, and those behind such attacks have uh, an immense uh, disrespect and abuse of uh, the general morality of human beings. Uh, for example, uh, earlier our Minister of Interior was describing to um, uh, Senator Kerry and uh, fellow senators over lunch that um, we have a 14-year-old boy who came and, and said that, that he was trained as a suicide bomber, that he doesn't want to be a suicide bomber. Now we're, we're looking for the parents of this boy so uh, to bring them over and to uh, return the boy back to the family. Uh, we, we don't find them uh, an equal uh, opponent mm. uh, in those terms. They have stooped very low into the abyss of uh, lack of morality or if you can describe immorality. I don't know if that term is right. Sure. All right. Uh, so uh, yes, but we are also morally uh, higher, uh, claim better, and that is uh, the winning enemy there. Mr. President, um, you have mentioned a couple times the peace jirga mm -hmm. and preparations for that. Um, uh, I remember, actually I was talking to Minister Stanikside uh, yesterday. He reminded me that in work here at USIP, Madam Secretary, um, Minister Stanikside put together two years ago the plan for reintegration and reconciliation and the surge, he tells me, as well. <laughs> now, and it's coming, it's coming about, and your plans um, later this month for the, uh, for the peace jargon. <coughs> Ambassador Khalilzad, who was going to join us this afternoon, um, asked in a, in a piece in the paper, what is the outcome, what is the end state for that reintegration and indeed the reconciliation? Reintegration means uh, the return back home and to disconnection with, with fighting and, and arms of those thousands of Taliban uh, soldiers who have been driven out of their homes and their country by circumstances beyond uh, our uh, reach or control and beyond theirs. Uh, 
and those who have been um, driven out of their homes and into the arms of uh, uh, those who give them guns to fight against their own country because of the mistakes that we have made, both as the Afghan government and, and, and our, our coalition partners. Now, these thousands of the Taliban uh, that you are trying to address and uh, reintegrate are uh, ideologically not against us. They're countryside boys uh, who uh, uh, don't hate the United States. Perhaps a lot of them would like to, to visit the United States given the opportunity, uh, who don't hate their own government or their own country, who uh, would not have a problem with our constitution, uh, who um, uh, out of fear or other circumstances are now um, um, having a gun against their own country, that we must try um, legitimately uh, to return them. Uh, reconciliation is an entirely different issue. That's uh, with the leadership, uh, mostly beyond our reach and mostly in our neighbors in Pakistan where uh, we'll have Pakistan also involved and a lot of regional um, um, uh, questions involved there. Reintegration is about those who I described earlier and reconciliation is a more difficult, more, uh, you know, to the future thing. We've been hesitant, we've been cautious about the reconciliation component of this. And yet, the President, you have this week have indicated support, certain conditions are there. Um, are we prepared to, to uh, support these compromises that will presumably come out of these negotiations with uh, senior Taliban? Well, I, I think we have the same position that uh, President Karzai does, that there are certain uh, conditions that have to be met. Um, that people cannot just uh, show up and say that they're prepared to uh, re-enter Afghan society after having uh, directed uh, suicide attacks and other kinds of violence against uh, Afghanistan. Um, and I think that, uh, as the President said, this process really starts uh, with the reintegration uh, off the battlefield uh, that the President was describing of people who for a variety of reasons, found themselves in the ranks of the Taliban. Um, I don't think any of us can predict uh, what the outcome of the next phase will be. Uh, first, the President has to have his own consultative peace jirga and listen to his own people because they may have very strong opinions. Uh, there may be people that they're willing to see the President uh, discuss potential reconciliation, and then there may be people that they're not. Um, they're also, from our best information, are leaders of the uh, Afghan Taliban who do not want to reconcile. They are very much against it. We don't expect to see you know, them walking uh, through the door. So I think starting with reintegration, uh, but thinking hard about what reconciliation actually would mean. And of course, from our perspective, uh, everyone, whether it's a person who pursues reintegration or reconciliation, you know, they must uh, abide by the laws and constitution of the uh, government uh, and nation of Afghanistan. They must renounce violence. They must cut ties with Al-Qaeda and these you know, extremist uh, allies that are in these networks that Al-Qaeda is either directing or inspiring. Um, and as on a personal note, you know, they must uh, respect women's rights, uh, that the women of Afghanistan who uh, still suffer too much with one of the very highest uh, maternal mortality rates in the world. Um, they, they deserve our support, and, and they are receiving support from their president and their government, and nothing can be permitted to interfere with that. So there are many steps along this way, but the general principle is, as the president stated, uh, it is to see uh, how possible it will be to try to move on a political track, because there is no military solution uh, to this conflict. As with most conflicts, there has to be a political track that is pursued, and uh, we're going to support uh, the President's efforts in doing that. Uh, uh, the current democratic uh, process in 2002, uh, after its liberation, with your help from um, uh, the Al-Qaeda and, and uh, the terrorist networks, and we did well. Uh, millions of people participated in the elections. Uh, um, uh, the first um, election of, of the president and um, uh, the provincial councils, and the, s the election for uh, the parliament, the first election, and then the um, second election for the president, uh, 
uh, and uh, now uh, the second parliamentary elections. Uh, we have um, uh, in place um, uh, all the necessary tools uh, uh, to make sure that the election is uh, credible and in keeping with the standards uh, that we can apply in Afghanistan. Uh, there will be international uh, observers there. We have um, a new uh, commission set up. We have uh, two um, international uh, um, election experts who will be uh, uh, part of the complaints <coughs> commission. Um, uh, the people who want to participate, there are already um, um, 2,700 almost uh, candidates uh, of whom uh, 400 and uh, 30 nearly are women, uh, much more than we had in the previous elections. So the enthusiasm, um, uh, the zeal, is that the right word? Yes, sir. All right. <coughs> well, the, the, the zeal in the Afghan people to uh, uh, practice democracy and to participate and to challenge is great. And uh, that is the, the, the motor running uh, our, our democracy. It will be a challenge. You're absolutely right. Uh, time is short um, if you have it in September, but uh, there are preparations, that, as you say, that need to, yes. need to, need to take place. Um, let me ask if there are questions from the room uh, that people would like to, uh, like to raise. Uh, Marvin Kalb, I see his hands up. Uh, Yes. Um, the question has to do with the size of the Afghan forces, of police, uh, and, and the army. Uh, we are now uh, uh, at uh, uh, nearly the mid-stage of our preparations of our um, uh, army and police. In other words, the Minister of Defense and the Minister of uh, Interior. Our army has uh, crossed the 130,000. 120,000 mark, we have uh, trained, well-trained um, uh, troops and officers. Uh, about three months ago, um, uh, I went and witnessed and gave the certificates of uh, the second batch of uh, Afghan uh, military academy graduates uh, who looked quite professional um, uh, and uniformed in, 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 in the right way. Um, uh, the um, Afghan police um, uh, is uh, nearly 180,000, um, but the, 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 uh, the goal is 180,000, 160,000 uh, goal. So the training is going on. The army began its training um, early on uh, from 2002 to, to three onwards with speed, with a little intervention. The police began uh, much later. We uh, only began to uh, pay full attention to this um, uh, important element of the Afghan security in 2007. Now there is massive investment by the United States and our other allies in Europe to the training of the police. The uh, structure is already emerging. Uh, the professionalism is emerging. And the discipline is being seen on the streets of, of, of uh, the capital and the rest of the country. Um, while this is going on, sir, um, the police, especially as, um, uh, as it is training, is also daily facing the threat of um, uh, terrorism and sacrificing uh, daily at least four uh, police uh, men a day are, are um, dying in Afghanistan defending the country. Uh, at least four. That's, that's the, the, the average that we have taken. Uh, some days that, that they may be uh, much bigger numbers. The aspiration that we have um, uh, in the Minister of Defense and in the Minister of um, uh, Interior is to have uh, uh, our army and police 
uh, reach uh, together at least um, uh, 300,000 uh, um, uh, that we have in mind. The Minister of Defense, and, and of course, is asking for much more. He's asking for 400,000 only of the Defense Force, uh, on which I'm quite cautious for the cost that it will incur to us in the future. But we are trying to uh, have uh, the right numbers between three, 300,000 to, to uh, 350,000 for now as we move forward and bring more stability to Afghanistan. Of course, then we'll be uh, speaking more and concentrating more on quality and equipment rather than numbers. Mr. President, that brings up a question of the sustainability of 400,000 Afghan National Security Forces. Um, Dr. Ghani has, has been describing the mineral wealth um, of Afghanistan, and you mentioned a couple of days ago at the State Department uh, uh, sometime in the near future, not too distant future, where Afghanistan would be able to stand on its own feet, I think yes. you said. Financially, um, 400,000 troops um, uh, of various kinds will be expensive. Or if we keep going at the current uh, speed of revenue collection, uh, of which this year, and correct me, Minister of Finance, are you around? Of which this year we had 22% um, increase in our revenue collection. 58%? 58%? Yesterday you said 22%. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was a good day. <laughs> Yesterday was a good day. <laughs> GDP growth. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, that, so that was GDP growth. 22% GDP growth and 50 something percent the, the, the revenues this year. Yeah. Now, if we move at this speed, within three years, Afghanistan will be able to pay for the existing numbers of our security forces. Within three years, Afghanistan will be paying its civil services, its military, and police forces from its own pocket. Now, that will be a tremendous achievement. And uh, it, 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 is, it is a benchmark that I hope our ministers will keep very, very strongly in mind so we can come back three years to, uh, later to the United States and tell the U.S. Congress and Senate, look, we've done it. Now uh, we will not be asking you for salaries, but we will be asking you for investment and uh, F-16s. <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, there's an Afghan journalist that I would like to call on uh, whose name is uh, Lalit Jaha. Um, Lalit is, um, is with us, yes. Yeah, I am Lalit Jha from Pazwak Afghan News, but I am an Indian. Uh, Pazwak News? Yeah. Good. Uh, that's very, that's, that's immense progress for you to be uh, working in Washington on behalf of the Pazwak News Agency. Good. Thank you, Mr. President. As you conclude your trip here, the further trip here, what's the outcome of the trip and what's the, uh, what's the takeaways for you, for the people of Afghanistan from this country are going back? And uh, uh, Madam Secretary, I would like to ask you the question, uh, the interview you gave to the CBS News on Sunday, in which you referred to a uh, sentence called severe consequences in reference to a question on Pakistan, uh, what happens in the case of a attack in the US, uh, which having its footprint in Pakistan. Would you like to clarify about that? Because on Monday, Ambassador Holbrook told us that the, the, the context in which you gave that statement was, was misinterpreted by the media and the CBS edited that interview. And also to like to share your thoughts on the resumption of talks between India and Pakistan next in July, and how is it going to achieve, help you achieve the goal of defeating the Taliban in Afghanistan and Pakistan? Thank you. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, sir, I'll be taking away uh, back home um, uh, quite a few uh, uh, achievements. Uh, one, um, uh, thing that I will take back home is um, to tell the Afghan people of this tremendously warm uh, hospitality of the American people, uh, that we have to do a lot more in order to uh, show that we are also hospitable in Afghanistan. Second, on uh, issues of uh, concern to, to both countries, uh, we have um, reached agreements on, on a range of issues. The most important of such issues, as far as our Afghans are concerned, were issues of detentions and the continuity of detention centers in Afghanistan run by um, uh, the coalition forces. Uh, we have agreed that uh, there will be a transition uh, of detention center uh, to the Afghan Authority January of next year, 1st of January of next year. And that will be, um, as soon as we are in Kabul, assigning uh, senior teams on both sides 
to work the exact uh, timelines of the complete transfer of detention centers. Uh, there was, uh, there was uh, a, 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 a fundamentally strong sentiment expressed um, uh, by the President, uh, by the Secretary of State, by uh, the Defense Secretary, and uh, the Vice President yesterday on um, uh, civilian casualties and the desire for, for the protection of, of civilians was strong and, and very, very uh, visible. Uh, the question of um, uh, uh, nighttime raids that, that concerns the Afghan people was raised sympathetically and, and an instruction issued to reduce it to the, to the, to the m uh, minimum uh, possible. On strategic partnership and enduring uh, partnership, we, you heard uh, uh, both of us uh, spoke. On economic uh, matters, we had extensive engagement uh, on the issue of agriculture and the importance of agriculture and the viability of the Afghan agricultural sector, its ability to produce the best quality of foods and, and to export on uh, mineral resources, the abilities of Afghanistan, the, the richness of the country in the mineral resources that can easily run of the knowledge that we have today of the Afghan mineral resources to uh, over a billion dollars. Our ministers yesterday said that it can be between one uh, to uh, three billion dollars. To three billion dollars. Yeah, three billion. Trillion, yeah, three trillion dollars. Trillion, sorry, that's what I meant, trillion, trillion, yeah. One to three trillion dollars. Now, uh, exploited well, this is massive wealth, massive opportunity, and with help given uh, by the United States to do it better, technologically sound, and extract in time, Afghanistan will do it. So these are all uh, uh, very good messages that we can take back uh, to Afghanistan. And of course, US backing of the peace process and so on. Well, w with respect to um, uh, uh, the question uh, that the gentleman asked me, uh, I responded at great length uh, to uh, the um, uh, interviewer on 60 Minutes. I started by talking about the importance of the strategic relationship we are developing with Pakistan, the fact that uh, we have uh, expanded our uh, interactions uh, far beyond the counterterrorism uh, agenda, which was basically what we inherited, that we are focused on uh, trying to create a broader and deeper understanding between our two countries, uh, and that we have gone quite a distance in uh, creating a better atmosphere. However, we are concerned um, about uh, the recent attack and, and other uh, efforts that thankfully uh, have not uh, been successful, just as you heard President Karzai say that he was concerned. And we've been encouraged by the way that the Pakistani government and military has in this past year been much more willing to go after the terrorists who are not only uh, threatening uh, outsiders, but threatening them. Uh, the military actions, you know, in SWAT and Waziristan. Uh, we think that there is more that has to be done. And we do fear the consequences of a successful attack that can be traced back to Pakistan because we value a more comprehensive relationship. So we do expect more and the investigation is going well between our two uh, investigative uh, bodies. Uh, there is a lot of uh, effort that is being undertaken uh, on the Pakistani side to provide information uh, to um, our teams over here. Uh, and uh, we just believe strongly that there is more that Pakistan must do to face what is now a common enemy. You know, the uh, attacks by uh, the extremists inside Pakistan are no longer aimed across their borders. They are aimed at destroying and killing people in mosques, in markets, uh, in every walk of society. Uh, so this is a matter of great uh, concern to the American people and to uh, our government. Uh, but we think that the concern is being uh, reciprocated uh, on the part of Pakistan. We have time for one last question from uh, from someone here, in all the way in the back, all the way in the back. Yes. Mr. 
Mr. President, if I could ask you to clarify something you said a few minutes ago. What did you mean by uh, that since last week the approach to the Kandahar operation uh, has, has taken the, the right tone? Um, and if I could ask you separately, did President Obama or anyone else you uh, talked to this week ask you to sideline or fire your brother from his role in Kandahar? Mm. Uh, do you believe it's appropriate for the United States to have an opinion on that? And for Secretary Clinton, do you think that Ahmed Wali Karzai is an obstacle to the long-term success of the U.S. operation in Afghanistan? Uh, when, I, when I said uh, uh, since last week, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, in the consequence of consultations that we have had uh, that um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, effort in Kandahar and the surrounding area has to be explained better. Uh, uh, the modality of it has to be explained better. So we are not calling it an operation. Operation would indicate a military operation, uh, tanks and troops moving. That is not the situation in Kandahar, as the, the Secretary of State uh, described very aptly. Uh, we are talking of a process, and uh, uh, it's only the, the change in terminology uh, uh, and for the right uh, uh, objective. Uh, uh, we, uh, the, the, the president did not raise the issue of uh, my brother in Kandahar. I raised it with him, uh, and um, to the satisfaction of both sides, um, uh, the, uh, even, if, even, even if I were to, to uh, resort to an activity of firing or hiring, um, uh, fortunately Afghanistan is a democratic country. Uh, uh, one elected by the people cannot be fired by the president. Uh, they can fire me. Uh, I can't fire them. Uh, so, no, that wasn't discussed, and I think uh, the issues that were raised in the... Uh, um, American press or in uh, the um, European press uh, have now been understood better by our uh, U.S. counterparts. So I'm not going to go into further detail on that. The issue is resolved as it stands now. I have nothing to add to that. Um, I just want to add one thing, though, to what the President said initially about uh, the Kandahar operation because uh, I've heard some of the commentary in anticipation of this operation making it sound like uh, it was going to be a massive military action, you know, <laughs> sort of sieging the city, tanks rolling into the city. That is, n that, is not the, uh, that is not the kind of operation that our military leaders uh, believe uh, is warranted. They want to have a successful counterinsurgency uh, operation that, you know, doesn't destroy Kandahar in the effort to save Kandahar. Uh, as someone rightly uh, said to me, one of my military uh, colleagues, this is, you know, this is not Fallujah. Um, lessons have been learned since Iraq, a lot of lessons. And the people who are guiding this operation, like General Petraeus and General McChrystal, learned those lessons in Iraq. And so I, I, I want the American press particularly to be disabused that somehow you're going to wake up one morning and, you know, D-Day has started. That is not what this is about. Uh, it's not what counterinsurgency uh, is about. We are not fighting the Afghan people. We're fighting a small minority of very dedicated, ruthless uh, extremists who unfortunately are able to enlist young men, like the President was uh, referencing earlier, uh, uh, for a variety of reasons and send them, you know, out onto the battlefield. So the goal is to help the people of Kandahar recover the entire city to be able to put it to the use and the benefit of the people of Kandahar. That is what we are aiming to accomplish and uh, we have a lot of confidence in our, our Afghan uh, partners and our international coalition. On behalf of the United States Institute of Peace, I would like to thank President Karzai and Secretary of State Clinton for being with us today.